Hi guys, welcome to the second installment on the Poker 3 RGB. The first installment, which you can find up here, is about the unboxing. This second installment is about programmability. And the third installment, which you can find up here, is about RGB backlighting. Today we're going to be talking about the Poker 3's onboard programmability. And for those of you guys who know about the Poker 3, this is probably one of its most exciting features. Before we get into that, let's just talk about some of the features of the Poker 3 that it has outside of the programmability. The first thing to talk about then are these dip switches on the back. These four little dip switches can change a lot of the functionality of the keyboard even before we get to programmability. The first two switches, one and two, change the layout of the keyboard. We're currently in the off position on all four switches. If we were to turn switch one on, then that would change the layout to Colmac. If we turned one and two on, that would change the layout to Dvorak. Leaving both one and two off leaves us as QWERTY. Dip switch three is where things start to get interesting. With dip switch three, you add another function key where the caps lock key is. So, on this board we currently have a function key here, but using the dip switch three, it would also turn this into a function key. Now that would be particularly useful if this was, was the arrows, because then you could use it all with one hand, but it's not. It's just another function key. I'm not really sure the point of it. The fourth dip switch changes the FN and PN keys. That's to say that it switches the position of these two keys. Now why would you want to do that? Well, on the Poker 2, you needed to use this key to access the function layer. And now, on the Poker 3, it's this key. So you may want to change it. Personally, I'm not that bothered. I have a lot of different keyboards with these two switches taking up different things. So this would just be something that I would get used to. So that takes care of the dip switches and the basically the hard functions of this board. But there's another layer that we should talk about before we get into the full programmability of the board. And that is the function layer. Now the function layer is non-programmable. It's the first layer on the board, but the switch assignments are already pre-programmed into the board. And in fact, if I switch over to my action cam here, you can see that there's side printing on all of these keycaps. And that side printing is what is accessible through the function layer. At the top, I know it's quite difficult to see here, but at the top is the F key row. So if I press function one, I'll be getting F1. Equally, if I press function I, I'll get the up arrow. That's how the basic function layer works. But if you look here at the comma, period, and question mark, it says layer two, three, and four. And this is how we're going to be accessing the deeper functionality, the deeper programmable layers of the Poker 3. Okay, so for this next part, what I need to do first is to plug in the USB into the Poker 3. Now straight away, the RGB lighting has been turned on. I just wanted to turn it off. We'll focus on the RGB in the next video. You can find that link in the eye here. For now, let's just talk about the programmability of this. So as we said before, the Poker 3 has four layers. But only layers 2, 3, and 4 can be programmed. Okay, guys, let's do this. First, we're going to do a reset, which is function R. We're just going to reset the board. Next step is to go function layer 2 to make sure that layer 2 is selected. Function control enters us into programming mode, you can see here. I'm going to be programming the letter Q, so when I press Q, that starts this blinking. Now, I type in my string, quick, run, run, run. You can see that came up on the screen, so you're actually typing something in. You want to be aware of that if you're punching in a password or something. I press PN to lock it in. You can see that I've now returned to programming mode, and I'm going to press function, control to end programming mode. Just going to go over to the notepad here, and you can see when I press function layer 2 and then Q that it prints it out. 
Now, it is weird that it, it only prints out so long as I'm holding the Q button down. It's a little bit weird. What we can do is introduce some of these millisecond pauses, but that is an unusual function. Let's see if it does it again on layer three. Let's do function layer three. The green light here is selected. Function control to begin programming. I'm gonna press Q. We're ready to program and it's Press PN to exit the mode. Function control to end programming. And let's see what happens. I, I've chosen layer three and I press Q. And I, again, it only works so long as I hold it down. That's, that's unusual. Again, uh, that would make it extremely difficult if not impossible to ever punch in a password uh, because you wouldn't know when the password had finished or when it just kept going. That's a really odd thing. I don't really understand why they've done that. Again, this is an engineering sample. This may not be the final version. The final version may work differently to this. This may just require a firmware update, but that seems pretty unusual to me. Let's return to the default layer by pressing M. Now we're back to the default layer. So that is basic programmability on the Poker 3. Even though it's a little unusual about the held press, one of the neat things about the Poker 3 RGB is that you can unplug this and plug it into another computer. It will remember the programming. So if you put in your password or anything else like that, you can bring this with you and lock it to a single keystroke. Now, some people will tell you not to do that. Uh, that storing your passwords on a keyboard is not very secure. That's up to you. I'm just telling you that's how you can do it. Well, thanks very much, guys, for tuning in today. That is programmability on the Poker 3 RGB. If you have any comments or questions, please post them in the comment section below. If you found today's video particularly useful, you can, of course, support this channel either through Patreon or by buying me a coffee in the About section below. Really appreciate you guys hanging out, asking any questions and comments. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to check out the first video, which is the unboxing and teardown, and the video after that, which is the RGB backlighting. Thanks again for tuning in. Take care, guys.